Welcome. My name is Gary Maurer. I'm with Green Pro Solutions. And I'm here today to talk about the newest version of uh, a Davy Tree spray truck. Uh, this is uh, a little larger than the one we introduced last year. This is called the Titan. It's a, uh, just under 26,000 pounds. And we have 950 gallons on this unit versus the smaller ones which have 7 to 800 gallons. The basic configuration is about the same. Uh, this is designed for IPM. Uh, in other words, we, can, we have smaller tanks that we can mix smaller amounts of product in. We have a large tank in the center that you, you can use for product if you want to, but it also has the advantage of being a nurse tank. So in the spring of the year when you're doing a lot of oil applications or in the fall of the year when you're doing a lot of furred applications, you can fill everything with the same product. On the other hand, during the summer, June, July, August, when you're doing all those IPM applications, you can actually fill the large center tank, 500 gallons in this case, with water, and then you can fill either the 200 gallon tank in the front, the 200 gallon tank in the rear with larger application materials for that particular day, or you can customize IPM applications out of this 60 gallon tank. And we do have an adductor tank in the back. The next thing I'd like to talk about is our very unique manifold system that we designed just for you folks at Davey. One of the feedback items that we got last year was from different people who got the trucks and were interested in using them in slightly different ways. Some cases you only ever send out one person on the truck, in which case this whole manifold is actually all linked together. It's in two pieces as you can see but it, it's actually all linked together and there's actually a valve here that's called linked both on the suction side and the return side and when these valves are open like I'm doing right now that means all of these tanks all of these valves are all linked together so that either of the two pumps that are on the truck can access all of the tanks on the other hand some companies said, well, sometimes we might send out a second technician. One technician would use the large pump to do the large jobs, and the other technician would use the smaller pump to do more IPM targeted uh, root feeding, uh, specialty ornamental types of applications. And how would you do that uh, at the same time, two different pumps, two different technicians? So we designed this special link system so right now they're all linked together. But if I had two technicians who wanted to do two different applications simultaneously with the two different pumps, we would actually shut this linked lever here on the suction and the linked lever on the return manifold. And now we have two distinct and separate manifolds. This larger manifold is attached to the 60 gallon a minute pump, the gamma 242 that's PTO driven while the smaller manifold is linked to that Delta 75 pump, 20 gallons a minute, 560 PSI, run by the 13 horsepower Honda engine electric start. So this particular manifold now, being unlinked, is actually tied to two tanks. It's tied to this IPM application tank, and it's tied to this 200 gallon front tank. Now, in addition to being an application tank, this is also a mixed tank. So I can mix applications in here if I wanted to make uh, just 20 gallons of a miticide. Mix 20 gallons, spray it out, it's a cone tank, totally empty, move on to the next product. Then I can make 37 gallons of uh, merit, let's say, for root injections. Uh, on the uh, rhododendrons, the root weevils that are attacking the rhododendrons. I can make 37 gallons. I can make up to 60 gallons in this tank and spray them out of this tank. Or I can make a product in this tank, mix it in here, and put it in the 200 gallon tank if I need a larger volume of product. So this is a multi-purpose tank, both mixing and application. And right now it runs off of the 20 gallon a minute pump. If I'm finished using that, or I only have one applicator, or both applicators are going to use the same product and do the same thing, let's say root feeding, you could just use the larger pump, or you could actually use the smaller pump, tie everything together, use both hose reels, 
and all of the tanks. And both technicians could be doing the same application at the same time. The other thing I want to say about this is these uh, manifolds also have a blowout system uh, set up for each manifold. You actually can't see the valves here. There's small blue valves that are kind of behind here. But you can set this up to pump air pressure in here to blow liquid out of the truck. Now, as you know, you can't blow 100% of it out. But if you're winterizing, changing over products from season to season, whatever, you can actually hook air pressure into here. You can blow out the hose reels. You can blow out a lot of the, a lot of the tanks and hoses on the truck uh, just by using compressed air. So that takes care of our manifold system. As you know, being a technician with Davy for some time, how multiple tank systems work. If you're moving from one tank to the next and uh, you want to move liquid from the 500 gallon tank to the 200 gallon tank, you need to make sure that you open the target tank, the tank you're going to move product from or to, and open that valve before you close the ones to the 500 gallon tank. So in this particular case, if I have something coming out of the 500 gallon tank, I want to move to the 200 gallon tank. I'm going to suck out of the 500. I want to put it in the 200. I'm going to open the valve to the 200 gallon tank. Then I'm going to shut the valve, excuse me, the return valve to the 500 gallon tank. So now I'm drawing out of the 500. I'm putting into the 200 gallon tank. When I have as much liquid as I want in the 200 gallon tank, I am then going to open this suction valve on the 200 gallon tank and close the valve on the 500 gallon tank. So now I'm just circulating within the 200 gallon tank. If I wanted to go backwards, I would just open uh, this line here to return first, close this, and then ultimately open this and close this. So now I'm back to the way I started. You always want to make sure you open the tank that you're either going to or from before you close the source tank. Uh, so that you don't create some kind of really serious problem. All right, you're out uh, on the first day with your brand new truck and the first thing you have to do is put water in it. So how do you do that? Well, this system is uh, very quick to fill. As long as you have enough water to pump into this truck, it can certainly distribute it through the tanks very quickly. So you have a two inch fill right here and there is a valve on this fill system. So you want to hook in your two inch supply line and then you want to open this valve. And then you have water that's available to come in and now you can select which tank or tanks you would like to fill. You can fill one at a time, all of them simultaneously. There's even a valve here to fill the 60 gallon tank in the front of the truck. and you just need to be careful of the fact that the tanks are different sizes. You have one 500 gallon tank, you have two tanks that are 200 gallon tanks, so they're going to fill at different speeds. And you can kind of hear when they're getting full and kind of gauge, you know, how much water is going into each of the tanks. And then you can also use this same manifold system to move water. In another part of this uh, presentation, we talked about the 500 gallon tank having the option of being either an application tank or a nurse tank. In its nurse tank mode, you do not have to use the pumps to pump liquid out of the nurse tank into one of the other tanks. We actually have a 40 gallon a minute electric transfer pump that we've designed into the system with a switch right here that will move water out of the 500 gallon tank into any other tank on the truck with the exception of the eductor tank. So if you finish emptying this tank, you need to move water. You can move water at 40 gallons a minute, which means this 200 gallon tank will be full in five minutes. And it works for every tank on the truck. The other thing you can do is if you're concerned about degassing, chlorine or fluoride, in the public water system. You can also just pump water out of the 500 gallon tank and either back into the 500 gallon tank so that you can help to uh, degas uh, things that are in your public water supply that you don't want to use when you're spraying. 
Another even better way of dealing with that is to use humic acid. If you put enough humic acid in a tank to just slightly discolor the water so that you can see that there's a change in the color, that humic acid will have locked up all of the toxins in that tank of water. Very simple, very inexpensive, and uh, you'll get much better performance out of your chemical products if you deactivate all of the items that might be in your public water system. So you fill the truck here, you have uh, water in all the tanks, uh, but there's another option with this particular system, particularly since you have the 40 gallon in a minute pump. First of all, you do have a certain amount of liquid stored in all this plumbing. So if you were to come back to this valve and open it, there's a lot of water in there. So you can use this water to rinse out backpacks or to wash down a spill. But more than that, if you're using the 500 gallon tank as a nurse tank, you have 500 gallons of water on your truck that with the 40 gallon minute transfer pump, you can pump all of it off the truck through this particular fitting to do all kinds of things that you may want to do with clean, fresh water. I want to point out that we have drain system on the truck for all of the tanks except for the eductor. And actually there's a way to do the eductor too. I'll show you that in a second. But this is a, a three-way valve here on the bottom of this cone tank. So the way the valve is set now, liquid it sucks out of the cone tank and goes into the manifold to do whatever you want to do with it. If I were to turn that the opposite way, turn this handle 180 degrees, this tank would drain totally. So if there's any reason that you need to totally clear out a tank because you're changing products or there's some issue that you need to address, it's very easy to clean out this tank and drain all the contents out of it. I also want to mention too that there's a special fixture on the top of each of these tanks so that the water basically goes in but will not splash out. So uh, you can take those particular uh, funnel shaped things off the top of the tank if you need to get in there to clean it and so forth. But for the most part you won't have to do that because you can put all of your products in through either this eductor tank or the 60 gallon tank uh, in the front of the truck. I mentioned the fact that the special funnels on top of each of the tanks was designed to be one way. To let water into the tank but not out of the tank. And this is the particular unit that goes on top of each of these three large tanks. Um, this four inch piece of PVC goes inside the tank. There are holes uh, drilled in it to let liquid out as the tank's filling. But this is how you also hear a change in sound so that you know that it's almost full. If you're not watching it, you can still hear it. Uh, and there's a special uh, ring on each of these tanks to, to, to create a nice tight seal. So these are one way in, no way out. Okay, I'd like to now talk about the eductor tank. Uh, with your famous Davy Arbor Green product, this is a really critical component of your truck. And uh, we've upgraded the eductor tank this year from last year. We're now looking at 15 gallons, so it gives you a lot more room to work with. However, that's also a potential problem, and I'll address that in a minute. The eductor tank uh, is hooked into this pressure manifold here, and the valve that operates the eductor tank is located on this pressure valve. And this is basically tied to the large 60 gallon per minute tank. In order to have the eductor system work, first of all, you have to be using a tank and you have to be pumping. You can pick any tank you want. It can be the 500 gallon tank, it can be the 200 gallon tank, but you have to have liquid going through the system uh, before you can use the eductor tank. Once you have liquid going through the system, then you open the eductor valve here on this manifold and you, you want to do that kind of slowly because you're building very high pressure into the bottom of that tank. So, and you will hear a sound as you build pressure. Now, how much pressure should you use? Right here on the tag it says no more than 300 PSI. And we say that because when you, this is a high pressure system. When this regulator is on and you turn this uh, handle to crank up the pressure, if you crank this up to about 600 PSI and then you open this eductor 
handle here on the pressure manifold, the pressure will drop out down to about 300 PSI. And that's the operating pressure that you want to use this. Now, the other thing that you need to be aware of is that you need then to choose what tank you want the contents of the adductor to go into. So once you actually have water going through the system, you can pick any target tank that you would like. You can put it into the, either of the 200 gallon tanks, the 500 gallon tank, or the 60 gallon tank. So then you would choose, once the eductor is, is running, ultimately uh, which tank you would want to, to put that contents of the eductor tank into. However, before we get started on that, we need to have something in the eductor tank. So, and you can do this while you hear the sound in the eductor tank, because right now it's just taking liquid through the eductor tank and it's just putting it back into the same tank that you're using as a source tank. And nothing's going to happen until we open this valve here on the bottom. So I can put my product in here. Now, a warning about heavy granular products, Davy Arbor Green. You cannot put an entire bag here at one time, most likely. Uh, you're liable to get it to bridge. So what we recommend uh, is that you put a small amount in, maybe a quarter of a bag or something like that. Then you can open this valve down here. And once you open this valve, this actually starts to educt whatever's in this tank out into whatever your target tank is. If you close that, it stops. Now, you can also open this in advance and actually have this open before you start to pour your Davy Arbor Green or whatever your powder or granular product is into this tank. Uh, and then as you pour it in, it'll be sucked out. So you'll be pouring it in and it'll be sucking out all at the same time. When you're finished adding the product, the inductor is still working. There's actually a rinse valve back here, and you can actually open this valve, and you can rinse out this tank, get any additional uh, sediments or uh, residues out of the tank uh, before you close this valve. When you're finished, you simply close the valve, and you're done. Now, I did mention just a moment ago, there's also a drain on this particular tank. If I were to take this quick connect off right here, and it's a regular hydraulic fitting, you just pull it apart, but anyway, this hose comes right off of here, so if there's a problem, you need to clean it, there's some issue with it, uh, you can easily disconnect it here and drain the contents out of the tank. When you're finished with the eductor tank then, you want to come back to your high pressure manifold and you want to close this eductor valve so that uh, you've taken all that pressure that the eductor system was consuming and now you've got it back into your spray system so uh, you have it available to uh, do production with. I want to talk now about some of the design features as well as operational features of the truck uh, so that you can get a better handle on how some of these things go together and and how you can optimize your performance as a spray technician because obviously that's what this is all about and this is truck is designed specifically with that in mind. So one of the things that you might note as you look at the truck in any kind of detail is the fact that these high pressure lines that are on the truck are actually larger than what's called for by the pump. We actually go to a, the next size larger hose on all our high pressure and supply lines to make sure that we're moving the maximum amount of liquid and the maximum amount of pressure through the system and ultimately to the hose reels. So in the front of the truck we have a 300 foot of 3 quarter inch hose and you see it has a special adapter to help with uh, rolling the hose up onto the hose reel and then in the back we have half inch hose uh, 400 feet so uh, and here again it's designed to help you roll it up from standing below uh, but it's great to pull out because you can go over tops of things uh, as you pull the hoses out. The buttons are right here for this hose <laughs> and uh, back here for this hose so you won't confuse them uh, with anything else. In the center here we have a 12 gallon gas tank. 
Uh, gas tanks that come on Honda engines are not all that large. You would spend half of your day refilling the gas tank. But you do need to get to it. So we put in this great pair of steps that gets you right up where you need to go. There's also a sight tube right here so you can see how much gas is in it. And you can easily get up to take the lid off and fill this unit with gas. With 12 gallons, you may be able to go the whole week, or at least a few days. Maybe you won't have to go get gas any more often than you get diesel fuel for your truck. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the actual hoses themselves and how we've uh, designed, first of all, quick connects so that regardless of the size of the hose, the quick connects are all the same size. So you can use any gun on any hose reel. There's also a special end on the hose. We call it a field repairable hose end. This unit right here. This unit actually comes apart right here in this area. The larger part screws onto the outside of the hose. The smaller part screws into the inside of the hose, making a watertight fit. But if for some reason you would get a cut in your hose or a break someplace, and you need to make a uh, repair in the field with two adjustable wrenches you can easily take this fitting apart cut the hose off where you need to and put this back together in five minutes or less you'd be ready to go so this is a tremendous uh, benefit uh, for the technician in the field if anything happens with a hose reel another thing I'd like to point out is this truck has four lights uh, including lights right over top of the manifold here. These LED lights, uh, one covers the manifolds, uh, one covers the back storage area, which we'll get to. Uh, there's another light right over this mixing area where the inductor tank is, and then there's another light on the other side uh, where there's a lot of storage. So if you happen to do night applications, you're going to have plenty of light to work regardless of what the conditions. Let's talk about the real workhorse of this truck. This is a Gamma 242, made by Udor, 60 gallons a minute, uh, 700 PSI, and um, this pump spins uh, at maximum output at 800 revolutions per minute. So this pump is really moving. It's pumping a lot of liquid at very high pressure. And as you can see, we have high pressure lines on this. This is a 2,000 PSI high pressure line that goes over to the pressure manifold on the other side. As far as maintenance on this particular item, um, there's a coupler right behind the pump that in order to do the maintenance on the heads on either side, you just disconnect that coupler, take off these four bolts, the whole thing slides right out. So from a mechanic's standpoint, this is a very easy pump to uh, do your annual maintenance programs on. You can see we have an oversized two inch um, filter here. Uh, the way this works is that you turn this yellow knob and it locks um, a valve in the back to limit the amount of liquid that will come out of here. So then I can take this out, about that much liquid will come out, and then I can take the ring and it's on really tight because this is often where you get your suction leaks from, where you get your air bubbles going through your system and your poor performance. Uh, but you can just spin that off, this whole thing comes out, you can clean out your filter and then put it back together. You need to also make sure that this goes in and seals tightly because if this comes shooting out, here again, it's under some pretty significant pressure. Talking about the filter up here, this is the filter for the Kappa seven, uh, Delta 75 for the 20 gallon per minute pump. Same concept, little smaller. We also include, since this is inside the truck, we also include this catch basin so that when you open this and uh, take this out, you're going to catch all the liquid right in here so you're not making a mess inside of your truck. The other thing is we have 10 strobe lights all around the top of the truck. Uh, last year we did put some strobe lights on your trucks, both uh, front and rear, uh, but uh, I know some offices uh, uh, like a little bit better visibility, particularly from the side. So this year we added a full array of 10 strobe lights all around the top perimeter of the body. 
One of the biggest complaints that uh, technicians have is lack of storage. And we think we've done an excellent job of solving that particular problem for Arborist today. Uh, this particular unit, you've got uh, four foot high of storage. You have a, a great adjustable shelf here. And let me point out how that works. These uh, bolts right here, and there's bolts up in the shelf on each of these tracks that if you loosen that bolt, this whole shelf slides up and down to whatever height that you need to have it at. In addition, and I mentioned this on the uh, shelving unit up front, there's these dividers that uh, can put in every four inches, you can put a divider in. And as I said, if you uh, need more dividers, you can easily order more dividers. Uh, if you need a second shelf, uh, you can order a second shelf. So we want to make sure you're well taken care of as far as storage is concerned. I want to talk about a few features now on this side of the truck that are harder to see from uh, when you're looking at all that plumbing on the other side. First of all, you'll notice that we build custom aluminum tank cradles. A couple reasons for that. They're a little lighter. Plus, we build them exactly the way that we want them. And as you can see, we run an awful lot of hoses uh, underneath these cradles. Uh, something that we worked hard to design into our system so that all of these hoses aren't out in the middle of your way. So consequently, you have a lot more storage over here. Uh, this is easily enough to put uh, five gallon buckets or bags of uh, uh, humates or gypsum or lime or whatever. So you can put a lot of stuff storage wise in this area. You even have alcoves here for additional storage. Uh, the other thing this lets us do is to design in a drain system. We talked about the drain of the 60 gallon tank on the other side of the truck. On this side of the truck, the drains are here under this front 200 gallon tank. So all three tanks, the rear 200, the 500, and the front 200, uh, plumbing all feeds in under here. And there's three different valves under this tank. They're protected out of the way. Um, one for the 200, one for the 500, and one for the front 200. And you can just slide your hand in under the tank and easily open or close the valves. Now, where does that come out? There's a drain right here. It's inch and a half, and we can provide cam couplers and all different kinds of things that you can attach on here so that when you decide you want to drain the truck, that you want to clean out tanks and so forth, that you'll be able to attach some hose on here and direct that wherever you want it to go. So that's a great additional benefit, particularly for winterizing and so forth. We have three different safety systems on each Davy truck. Well, actually quite a bit more than that. We have three safety systems just on the plumbing, on the pumping systems. Uh, the first safety system uh, is on the return manifold. So if for some reason you had all of these valves closed and you were trying to pump liquid, this relief valve would open up and relieve this pressure off of this manifold back into the suction manifold so that you wouldn't have broken hoses or hoses pop off and chemicals flying everywhere. That's the first safety system. The next safety system is on the high pressure manifold where your regulator is attached and exactly the same thing. If for some reason this would jam or the regulator would uh, somehow fail and you couldn't pump water through it, this relief valve will release and let the pressure off back into the suction manifold. Another safety item I'd like to talk about is the fact that we put an eye wash uh, right here, close to where you're doing all of your work, so if some accident happens, you do have eye wash right here. If for some reason your hose reels stop working or your electric pump won't start because of an electrical problem or your electric transfer pump won't start, uh, we have a battery right here that controls all the electric on the truck and there's a 50 amp circuit breaker on top of this battery. So if you simply take the lid off the top of the battery, all you need to do is push the red button that says a 50 on top of it and all of your electrical systems should magically function again. If this is something that's popping very frequently, you're having trouble with your hose reels on a frequent basis. Uh, there are also special 
uh, solenoids and so forth for each of the hose reels. That could be a problem. Uh, but give us a call if there's some issue about uh, those items because we'll need to look farther than just resetting a circuit breaker. Another thing I want to make mention of is this particular half inch hose reel. Uh, we have two different pumps going into the hose reel, both your 60 gallon a minute pump and your 20 gallon a minute pump both feed into the half inch hose reel. On the other hand, only the large 60 gallon a minute pump feeds the three quarter inch hose reel. But just to make sure it's easy and there's no problems for you as a technician, there are check valves on either side of this hose reel. So there's a feed on the right hand side of the hose reel going in. There's also a feed on the left hand side of the hose reel going in. There's a check valve on each side so when you're when you're pumping in from one side of the hose reel, it cannot go through the hose reel and out to the other side into who knows where. I also want to point out a safety uh, issue while we're back here, and that is our camera. Uh, this camera is set up when we deliver the truck to be on all the time that the engine's running, basically, or all the time that the transmission is in gear. Um, you can set it up just as a reverse camera but we find that many of the technicians like to have it on all the time. So in case uh, someone pulls up too close to them at a stoplight or a stop sign, or um, if somebody walks behind them, uh, even when they're not in reverse, they would like to know that. So we basically deliver the truck with the camera on all the time. If you want to change that, uh, you can certainly do that, and the instructions with the camera are, are pretty easy about setup and changing and so forth. The other thing I should probably mention, you already know this, but you never start a pump with the pressure on. In this case, this is a regulator for your large 60 gallon per minute pump. This is the regular for your smaller 20 gallon per minute pump. You never want to start um, a pump with pressure in the system. And when you stop spraying it, you want to take pressure off of the system. So you want to take the pressure out of the system. The other thing, as you know, is that you don't want to start a pump until you have a source and return tank open or a suction line and a return line open for a tank. So in this case, we have a 200 gallon tank open here. So now we can start one of the pumps because we have a source of liquid and a place to return that liquid once it goes through the pump. Uh, very serious problem if you don't set this up before you start to uh, one of the pumps on the truck. Now I'd like to talk about a couple other safety items that are on the truck and uh, we're actually going to open the door of the cab here to talk about two of those items. Uh, one is the fire extinguisher right here inside of the operator's door so you can get to it very quickly and right in front of the seat you also have a first aid kit uh, so those are two safety items in addition to the eye wash kit, which we pointed out on the other side of the truck. We talked about some safety features on the other side. Now I'd like to pick up some more safety features on this side of the truck. And on the manifold system, we talked about two safety features with the spray system itself. On this side of the truck, we can see the third of those three items and that's this vacuum relief valve. This little brass uh, fitting uh, mounted in this pump and the other pump has one as well. If for some reason this pump is trying to operate and it cannot get enough liquid or if it can't get any liquid because there's no suction valve open, this valve will open and let air into the system so that the pump does not destroy itself. This is something you don't want to fool with. It's set at a, a preset setting and it, it has to remain at that particular setting. But this is the third safety system on the spray system itself. It's critically important and uh, it's good that it's here. When we talk about this large 60 gallon minute pump, high pressure, 700 PSI, driven by the truck's engine, obviously it has a huge amount of power, but the danger is also that you can overspeed this pump. It cannot go more than 600 RPMs, and obviously the truck's engine can go a lot faster than that. Now there is linkage between the transmission speed, there's a reducer um, uh, uh, torque box 
that links all this stuff together. So the speeds of the engine of the truck and the speed of this pump are not the same whatsoever. However, there is a maximum speed that the engine can run without doing damage to the pump. And there's a tag inside the truck right above the PTO switch that says warning, do not operate over 1500 RPM with PTO engaged. That's a critically important warning. If you run the truck or you try to drive away with the power takeoff still in gear and you drive over 1500 RPMs, uh, you're going to do damage to this pump and this is a very, very expensive pump. So you do not want to do that. But the other thing that you need to know is that for many of your applications, you do not need to run, in fact, you, we do not recommend you run this pump at anywhere close to its maximum speed. If you're just root feeding and two people are doing that, you can just run the truck at idle and it'll be pumping 20, 25 gallons a minute and that'll be more than enough for two applicators to do root feeding. Uh, on the other hand, if you're doing a tree that's 60 to 70 feet high, you probably only need 30 to 40 gallons a minute and maybe you only need 400 PSI of pressure. Here again, the, the truck does not have to run at full RPM to make this pump go as fast as it needs to go to pump the maximum volume and maximum pressure. So we would ask you to think carefully about how uh, the truck can be used most efficiently, particularly the pump used most efficiently uh, to do the work that you need to do and then make the adjustments accordingly. There is a, a throttle switch attached to this uh, where you can change the uh, RPM of the truck in small grades. It's like a speed control uh, switch so that you can control how fast uh, you want this particular pump to operate. So consider carefully how you want to use the pump, what you need to use it for, and how you need to set up your truck to operate at maximum efficiency and still get the job done that you need to do.